Willie Watson, welcome to E-Town. Thanks. So good to hear you sing. You're such a, um, such a, such a distinctive singer. Um, did you s decide at some point that, that you were going to sing high? Uh, I mean, sing high notes. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I, when I got to Boulder, I thought I might try to sing high. <laughs> Something I noticed around here. Um, it sort of came natural. Uh, I started listening to Neil Young at a pretty early age, and yeah. he sang real high. So those were the first songs I learned. Um, Needle in the Damage Done and Pocahontas and Hey, Hey, My, My. So uh, it just it's sort of where I started out. Yeah. I didn't know any any different. And and you were a teenager at the time, so it wasn't, yeah. didn't seem like you it wasn't that daunting. Yeah. Yeah, my voice was even smaller and yeah. higher then. <laughs> and you know the the I, I mentioned the music scene in Ithaca, New York, and it was really uh, I mean it was it's a remarkably vibrant music scene in that part of the world that most people aren't aware of. I'm trying to think of you going to those shows, you know, with the horse flies. Horse flies, Richie Stearns and Richie Judy Stearns, Hyman, they yeah. were a big inspiration for me. Yeah. Um, my dad was a, a music fan. He didn't play anything, but he was an avid listener and music lover. Um, and he, uh, he was from Ireland, and he was a big fan of, of uh, old traditional fiddle music and everything. So uh, he, uh, he in introduced me into that stuff. When he saw that I was into Woody Guthrie um, and Bob Dylan and the, the folky scene, he... Um, took me out around town, and uh, we went to some Irish pubs, and, and uh, those guys sat in the corner and drank Guinness all night. And Wild. I also went to a, a horsefly shows, and I saw Richie Stearns and Judy Hyman, and Judy was, they had like, a, she had an electric fiddle, and um, there was a drum set, and uh, Richie had these uh, like electric banjos with paintings all over the heads. Right. And, and if you know Judy, she, she kind of does this headbang thing when she, she plays, and her eyes roll back into her head. <laughs> Um, and I thought that was the coolest thing. At like, yeah. you know. <laughs> See, not every teenager gets to have that experience of the collision of the two worlds, like headbanging, you know, electric trance music and fiddles, you know. It all came together right there. <laughs> and, um, and so, and I mentioned your, your uh, early band, and I'm assuming that was probably, you know, my guess is that you would have been trying to emulate that sound in some way. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and Horseflies were a big, big influence on that band. It's funny that you mentioned that no, no one knows about The Funnest Game. The Funnest Game. And that name, um, The Funnest Game was, if you don't mind, I'll tell you, it was actually um, a, a game that we made up. It was in, in the winter, so it started with snow and snowballs or maybe ice blocks. <laughs> and you just stand in a circle and throw something in the air <laughs> and hope it doesn't hit you. Um, <laughs> That, that, was, that was the funnest there game. There was a lot of weed yeah. in Ithaca, too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, um, we should mention that the, the, the music scene is both, uh, is both uh, a, a, uh, an antidote to and a reflection of the fact that the weather is pretty rough in Ithaca. So I think people get to spend a lot of time in the wintertime practicing. Absolutely. It's like eight months of winter. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's really, yep. really gray. And then spring comes around and everybody kind of freaks out. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a trip. And so it must have been, a, must have been an amazing experience when, when the early incarnation of Old Crow Medicine Show got together and you found you got some buddies and you had some, you had some uh, kindred spirits and shared interests, and you decided to travel. Yeah, well, when I met those guys, Catch and Critter, um, they came up from the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia. They were from Harrisonburg, Virginia. Uh, their band had just broken up, and the funnest game just kind of broken up. Um, and now, in the, in the funnest game, I was the only singer. And, and those guys came to town, and I met them, and they were singing harmonies together. It was two guys singing together. I latched right onto that. I kind of latched onto them. Um, and now I don't know, you know, if, like me and Critter kind of became buddies right away, and it sort of, it's, you know, took a while to sort of integrate into all three of us to actually come together and, mm -hmm. and feel like it was going to be a thing. Um, but when it finally did, uh, yeah, we got the rest of the guys together, and uh, we went to Canada in October right. and uh, played street corners, ended up in Ottawa for a while. We found that in, in Canada they have... Um, coin uh, dollars and coin two dollars, loonies and toonies. And uh, you're saying, you know, it's a lot easier to throw that into the guitar case than, a, than, a, than paper money. So we, we went to Ottawa. We couldn't get across the border. 
because they wouldn't let us. So we finally, we took, took three borders for us. We had to go to the Mohawk Reservation to get across. So you're part of this whole immigration conversation, <laughs> yes, <exactly>. too. <laughs> That's all I was thinking about back there. Um, <laughs> and uh, so the first day in Ottawa, we played at the farmer's market and ate, made 800 Canadian dollars. And Holy thought, smokes. Yeah. We thought we'd, we'd just keep on going west. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And the thing I remember, I remember, I hitchhiked to Canada and and played banjo and you know did stuff on the streets. And I remember that the like the first day I was playing on the streets, somebody said, "Hey, um, you're good. Why don't you go on national television?" Yeah. Like the Canadian television was wide open to folk music and that kind of. I was like, "Boy, that's amazing." You know. So not only do they really support their buskers, but the media, the radio, and the TV were pretty open to particularly Canadian musicians, which you guys, of course, weren't. No, we definitely were not. Yeah. But then, that, you know, and that, that uh, scene about, of course, you know, Old Crow just took off. It was remarkable. It but took it, a little while, but we eventually while. got there. Yeah. yeah. And that story about, the, the, about meeting Doc Watson in Boone, North Carolina, it's just like, um, that's just a legend that couldn't have been scripted more generously for you guys. It was right? one of those uh, right place, right time things. That was the story of that, that band. Everything, anything that, you know, ha any good things that happened sort of came yeah. from just being in the right place at the right time, from meeting Doc and then it, from, from he's put us on Merlefest. And at Merlefest, we met a woman there who was a like manager of the, the Grand Ole Opry. Um, and they were doing these outside plaza parties, they called them, and she asked us to come there. So that summer, we drove to Nashville every weekend. And by the end of that summer, we thought it would be a good idea to move to Nashville. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's amazing. It's amazing. So, so you rode that wave, you watched the whole thing, you played you know, big venues, playing on the Grand Ole Opry, doing the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and, then, uh, and then struck out on your own. Do you... Do you uh, miss the infrastructure of having people help you carry stuff and set stuff up and tune your instruments and Absolutely. all that? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got these heavy guitar cases and everything starts hurting airport. my shoulders. <laughs> I'm way too important for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think um, it's also interesting because not everybody who's been in a band can do the solo thing. I didn't know I could do it, and I didn't yeah. think I could. Yeah. Um, I was so used to being in the band, and being in a band was, was what I'd always wanted. Yeah. Um, um, having that camaraderie and having the, my gang of guys yeah. um, growing up, that was, it was always important to me. Um, so yeah, it was a, it, there was a learning curve for sure, and I was so scared. Yeah. Um, but it just took a few shows, right. you know, and just taking, being up there on stage and having people that tell me that it was, that it was good yeah. after. Um, it, it gave me the confidence I needed to go on, you know. Yeah. And I'm up there on stage, and it's all about me, and, you know, as long as I'm talking about myself, I'm feeling all right. <laughs> I'm an entertainer. It's what we do. That's a, or politicians do the same yeah. thing, apparently. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the, um, the other thing is that, that I should mention the, the relationship with Gillian Welch and Dave Rawlings. You, you're, you play in the Dave Rawlings machine, last time I've seen him yeah. anyway. Yeah. And so um, that's been a really important connection for you, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, going back to when we first moved to Nashville, we got connected with Gil and Dave um, pretty soon after we, we'd yeah. moved there. Yeah. And so on this new record, uh, first of all, again, the way you sing and the way you play and the intensity you bring to these songs, the... the uh, the interpretation of these songs, you would have been like the king of Greenwich Village in the 60s. You would have been, you know, you would have played at Newport Folk Festival. I mean, you would have been that guy. Until Bob came around. Until Bob came around yeah. and screwed the whole thing up, yeah. right. Oh, you now you have to write songs too? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but uh, did you discover this great body of folk music? Did you like, were you one of those guys who was drawn to the Harry Smith anthology or... Absolutely. That yeah. thing is like the starter kit. Yeah. Um, and if anybody's interested in getting into this music, go out and buy the Harry Smith Folk Music Anthology. Yeah. Um, and it's got every... I didn't even realize when I started looking at the... You look back at the songs on my first uh, Folk Singer Volume 1, I think half of them are on that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. And, um, you know, he, he spent time here in Boulder, so he was a... He was a, a character who was really responsible for changing a lot of people's lives with that collection. And, and so how do you choose the songs now? And, and specifically, do you ever bump up against an old folk song and think, man, that is too, that's too perfect the way it is. I, can, I, can't, I can't do that. I can't touch that. Um, I, I hear stuff and I think that's way beyond my capabilities and I, I shouldn't even try. Um, you listen to someone like, you know, there's like, there's people that I have not even 
attempted to touch. Um, Blind Willie Johnson, for right. example. Like, yeah. you know, I haven't figured out how to do those songs. I can't play guitar like him. And that's yeah. the thing. I hear stuff, and I have to interpret it my own way because right. I'm not the guitar player or the fiddler that you know that that the original performer was. Well, I think you've chosen well, and I think you've infused these songs with some great energy. And I just should mention on the new record, before we get back to music, because we've got more to do, um, it's great to hear you singing with the Fairfield Four. Mm, those guys were amazing. Love they, those they guys. Made, they rounded out that whole record. We got yeah. to a point where uh, we didn't really know what to do to make it a record, and brought those guys in, and we were done. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they were on uh, E-Town's first season back in 91, and I produced a couple records in, in Nashville with those guys, and they were really just remarkable singers. And, of course, it's not all of them anymore. But uh, Yeah, they, they changed, changed guys out, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But it's uh, it's an incredible sound. It's one of those, you know. So again, you've you've captured something that I think is is um, just a, a remarkable sound. Great great energy to those songs. So congratulations. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate yeah. it. Well, let's get back to more music. Welcome back, if you would, Willie Watson.